Shalom, Shalom. My name is Yeshaya Yisrael. I want to go over a very brief subject. And of course, giving honor and praise unto Yah, creator and the maker of heaven and earth. We want to go to Isaiah chapter 40, verse 8. And it reads as follows. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Okay, let's go to verse 7. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, because the spirit of the Most High bloweth upon it. Surely the people is grass. Verse 8 again says this. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. So I wanted to sit there and have that to be read for several reasons. One, it shows you that man is not forever, but the word of the Most High is forever. All right. So let's remember that as we go along, that it says the word of the Most High is forever. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 8, if we will. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 8 and it says the following all right the most high sent a word into jacob and it hath lighted upon israel now let's understand that the most High sent in the word into jacob in this particular case what i wanted to go over is things that may have not been the best words that were said to the israelites let's go if you will to the book of amos all right chapter 7 if we will. Amos chapter 7 verse 17. And it reads as follows. Therefore thus saith the Lord. Thy wife shall be a harlot in the city. And thy sons and thy daughters shall fall by the sword. And thy land shall be divided by line. And thou shalt die in a polluted land. And Israel shall surely go into captivity forth of his land. So these types of things did happen. And do continue to happen. The word that lighted upon Israel in this particular case, as far as having our sisters, our wives, our females of our nation, whoring themselves out unto the other peoples and to us. All right. Then it says, and your sons and daughters shall fall by the sword. That's pretty self-explanatory because we read about the sword in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. And thy land shall be divided by line. In other words, when they say, okay, this is the Gaza Strip, this is the West Bank, this is um, Jordan, um, this is this and this is that, that's our holy land. You understand? And so what they've done is they divided it by line. All right? And it says what? And Israel shall surely go into captivity forth of his land. So the children of Israel did go into captivity out of his land. So we want that to be noted for reference purposes. All right? Amos chapter 7 verse 16 Now therefore hear thou the word of the Most High Thou sayest prophesy not against Israel And drop not thy word against the house of Isaac Therefore thus saith Yah Thy wives shall be a harlot in the city And thy sons and thy daughters shall fall by the sword And thy land shall be divided by line And thou shalt die in a polluted land And Israel shall surely go into captivity forth of his land so Israel going into captivity, the land being divided by line, the European um, Jewish people over there, they're not the house of Israel. All right, so we just want that to be noted for reference purposes. Let's go, if we will, all right, to the book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 11, so we can gain an understanding. Daniel, chapter 9, verse 11, okay, and it reads as follows. Yea, all Israel has transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moshe, the servant of the Most High, because we have sinned against him. All right, so when it speaks about the oath and the curse that's written in the law of Moshe has been poured upon the house of Israel, we can see what Isaiah is talking about when it said the Most High sent a word into Jacob and delighted upon Israel. In this particular case, being the bad things, not necessarily the better or best things that happened as far as the word coming to pass against the house of Israel. So we just want that to be noted for reference purposes. Let's go, if we will, brothers and sisters, to Zechariah, the prophet. Zechariah, the prophet, chapter 7, verse 8. And it reads as follows, all right? 
And the word of the Most High came unto Zechariah, saying, Thus speaketh the Most High of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment, and show mercy and compassion every man to his brother, and oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor, and let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. But they refused to hearken, and pulled away their shoulder, and stopped their ears that they might not hear. Yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone, lest they should hear the law, and the words which the Most High of hosts have spoken in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came a great wrath from the Most High of hosts. Therefore it shall come to pass, that as he cried, and they would not hear, so they cried, and I will not hear, saith the Most High of hosts. But I scattered them with the whirlwind among the nations whom they, have, whom they knew not. Thus the land was desolate after them, that no man passed through nor returned, for they laid the pleasant land desolate. All right, so when it says that no man passed through nor returned, it's talking about of the true house of Israel, not passing through nor returning unto their land. All right, so we want that to be noted for reference purposes. Now, other thing we want to sit there, brothers and sisters, and get into, if we will, okay? Let's go remembering that the word of the Most High stands forever, and remember that the Most High already made a word against Jacob and it lighted upon the house of Israel. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, so we can gain an understanding of what we're talking about, all right? Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, okay, and it reads as follows. For unto us a son is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon the kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Most High of hosts will perform this. All right, so we want this to be noted for reference purposes. Many people go here and say this is speaking about Jesus Christ. All right, let's read this one more time and see what we can glean. Already having gone over Isaiah 40 and Isaiah 9 verse 8 and Amos 7 17 and Daniel chapter 9 verse 11. All right, and Zechariah chapter 7 pointing out verses 13 and 14. Let's read Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 and 7 one more time. For unto us a son is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Now, they will go right here and say, see, this is talking about who they say is a Mashiach or a Messiah, Jesus Christ, and that he was called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God. The everlasting father the prince of peace okay so let's remember that this person is said to be those things now let's go if we will to the book of isaiah chapter 53 verse 4 so we can gain an understanding concerning this particular matter okay and it says the following surely he have borne our griefs and carried our sorrows yet we did esteem him stricken smitten of god and afflicted okay let's read that again Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Okay, now let's go to Isaiah 53, verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Okay, let's see what's going on in this particular part. And in this particular stance, are we to understand that Isaiah 53 is talking about Jesus Christ? Because it says, surely he have borne our griefs and carried our souls. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Then it goes down to verse 10 now. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. So let me ask a question concerning this kind of matter right here. Um, if we're reading in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, it says that this same person who many people say is Jesus Christ is also they're saying the same person, Jesus Christ, that Isaiah 53 is talking about. 
So let's look at this one more time. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So here's my question. You're saying that Isaiah chapter 9 and Isaiah 53 is both about the same person, Jesus Christ. Many people will say, yes, that's what it's talking about. Now, some people may say, Yeshua, Yahweh Shai, or so forth and so on, or that is to say the star of the New Testament. Now, let's um, understand this particular aspect right here in this particular regard. Let's look at this. Are you then telling me that the one who was called the mighty God, the everlasting father, the ruler of peace or the prince of peace, is he the same one who is called the mighty God? Is the same one that it says in Isaiah 53 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He had put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. So according to that, Jesus Christ was killed for the sins of the people. So my question is this. Are we to believe that what we read in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, and this being the mighty God, is the same one who is said to be the mighty God, which many people say is talking about Jesus Christ, died for the sins of the people? Or are you saying that the mighty God died for the sins of the people? Or are you saying that the mighty God died or became a human and died and then um, died for the sins of the people? Brothers and sisters, that's not the word that was left to the house of Israel. So we want that to be noted. Isaiah chapter 9 is not about Jesus Christ, nor is Isaiah 53. But that was discussed in another particular subject. Okay, so let's go back into the scriptures, if you will, to Leviticus chapter 26, verse 39. All right, so we can gain an understanding of what we're talking about. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 39. Okay, and it reads as follows. And they that are left of you shall pine away in their iniquity in your enemies' lands, and also in the iniquities of their fathers shall they pine away with them. All right. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 10, so we can gain an understanding of what we're talking about. Ezekiel chapter 33, all right, verse 10, so we can gain an understanding of what it is talking about in this particular regard. And it reads as follows. Therefore, O thou son of man, speak unto the house of Israel. Thus ye speak, saying, If our transgressions and our sins be upon us, and we pine away in them, how shall we live then? Say unto them, As I live, saith the Most High, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? All right, so it's talking about Israelites turning from their ways, to, meaning their wicked ways, all right? And that the Most High have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. So let's remember now that the word of the Most High is forever. And so let's go back to Leviticus chapter 26, and let's go into verse 40, and it reads as follows. Leviticus 26, verse 40. If they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers, with their trespass, which they trespassed against me, and that also have been have walked contrary unto me, and that I have also walked contrary unto them, and have brought them into their enemy, into the land of their enemies. If then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled, and they then accept the punishment of their iniquity, then will I remember my covenant with Jacob. And also my covenant with Isaac, and also my covenant with Abraham, will I remember, and I will remember the land. So you see how many times we read about the land in the book of Zechariah, all right, in the book of Amos chapter 7, Zechariah chapter 7, and right here in Leviticus chapter 26, verse 42, we read about the land. The Most I said he's going to remember his covenant with Jacob, with Isaac, and with Abraham. But what we have to do is confess to our iniquities and the iniquities of our forefathers and return to do that which is right and forsake our ways. That is the wicked way that Ezekiel chapter 33 speaks of. Remember now, it says emphatically that the word of the Most High is forever. So now if Jesus Christ, according to many, was supposed to be that word, then how could he have died for the sins of the people? It is impossible because the word of the Most High does not die. 
Israel was led into captivity, as it says, because of our iniquities. So we want that to be noted. You may have to listen to this again. Shalom. Most are blessed.